Hi, this is Tatiana. Uh, this is my uh, series about uh, games that narcissists play. I want to remind you that I am not a doctor. These videos are part of my own coping strategy of recognizing games that narcissists play. And my hope is that you will hear something here that validates your gut feeling about what you uh, may be going through. Um, today, I'm talking about physical violence as a game that narcissists play. We all know that we um, don't approve of hitting and slapping, punching, all of those kinds of things. Um, those are um, overt, very obvious signs of abuse. And I have had abuse training. Um, I have been abused um, by my father. Um, and um, I just want to say, uh, like you're going to hear everywhere, you know, um, it's not okay. It's not okay to get hit, punched, slapped, kicked, any kind of physical violence. And if you are in a physically violent, abusive relationship, please call the National Abuse Hotline, National Domestic Abuse Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 and get out. Do whatever you can to get out. Um, and remember that violence um, escalates when you try to leave. So be very careful and do not confront your abuser. Please um, educate yourself about everything that you can about physical abuse. Um, it is extremely dangerous. Um, and I'm not going to pussyfoot around. You're in danger. So please be very careful with yourself, your children, your pets, um, if someone is already physically abusing you. Okay, um, but I also want to talk about some of the other things that are, in my mind, physical violence. Um, that you, that maybe, and like I said, I'm trying to touch if something is in your gut, okay? So one of the things, so, several other things I've experienced in my life is playful, quote-unquote, punching and wrestling, where it's supposed to be playful, but you don't feel like it's playful, Okay, and those are things to take seriously. If you don't like it, then it's not right. Okay, um, this was an interesting one that happened with my um, overt narcissist. Um, something told me in my gut, well, the first time he tried this, um, something told me in my gut, um, he tried to tickle me. And I don't know why, that of all the misery that he did put me through, I don't know why, but I, I am a very, very ticklish person, and my gut told me not to tell him that, and so I pretended that I couldn't feel tickling, and it was very odd in my mind, um, and somehow I did switch my mind into some kind of survival mode where I never indicated to him that I was ticklish. And he did try to tickle me everywhere. And um, my gut just felt that I should not let him know that. And um, he did try several, several times to tickle me. And if someone is tickling you, um, you know, they're trying to come across. It's a passive aggressive abuse. Um, when they are tickling you and don't stop. When you are being tickled, even if you are laughing, you can't breathe. You can be tickled to the point of vomiting. You can be tickled to the point of bruising. You can be tickled to the point of, um, of pain. And um, if someone is doing that to you, um, remember... Do not confront, but um, I don't know why my brain was able to do that, but that might be something that you can do while you're figuring out a survival strategy. Okay, um, so tickling is one that we don't talk about, but that can be passive-aggressive physical violence. Um, pinching or poking you, you know, we joke about that with the kids, you know, waving their finger in front of your face, like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, and it annoyed the fuck out of you while you were a kid, but certainly if you're an adult and you are in a relationship with someone who is doing that to the point that you get upset 
and then they gaslight you and tell you that you are the one who's not playful and you're so serious and blah, 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 blah. Okay, that is passive aggressive physical violence. Okay, um, what do we got here? Um, and um, I think that was everything that I was able to list. So if you have any other things, um, additional advice, you know, please post that in the comments. I, um, as I said, I was physically abused by my father um, as a child. I did once I was older, um, after um, several months, actually, I had, I had done a um, psychological, I was like 15 or something, and I had done this psychological experiment where, in, because in my dreams, he would attack me and I would try to punch him. And I, some kind of invisible force field would keep me from hitting him. And so in the daytime, I would um, punch him in my mind. I would continue to repeat that scenario until my fist was able to touch his face and uh, cause a physical reaction. And I, and I did that psychological experiment because I was so afraid of my father. I was so afraid of him. Uh, I was terrified of my father. I know that other people have been much more physically abused than I have, um, but for me, it was terrifying, and it was controlling me and controlling my life, so I had to go through that experiment to gain my own self-confidence, so I did that in my mind, and at this time, I was living with my sister, and shortly after that, I was forced to go live back with him. And I'm grateful to God that I went through that experiment because, um, as I said, do not confront your abuser. Um, um, however, at this time in my life, I felt confident enough that I could confront my abuser, and I did. And I s explained to him, you know, legally, um, you have a right to tell me where I'm going to live, and I want you to know that if you ever hit me again, I will beat your ass with this baseball bat. I'm going to have a baseball bat in my bedroom. And if you touch me, I'm going to hit you with it. And then I am going to call the police. Um, and for that particular narcissist, that worked. So I'm not going, if you are in a physically abusive relationship, I'm not going to condone that that's what you, what you do. You know in your gut what you need to do. So I'm telling you to obey your gut for the unique situation you are in. For my father, confronting him removed his narcissistic supply. He realized that he could not intimidate me anymore. And I, from then on, in fact, was left alone. From then on, I was left alone in the sense that I moved my shit into his house, but I was not there. I obeyed him. I told him where I was. I left messages. I told him I, I would be there every whatever it was Thursday, and I did my laundry. If he wanted to catch up with me then, he could. But for that particular narcissist, that was what, um, that was his narcissistic supply, and he realized that it had no more power over me, okay? Um, however, I think probably what contributed to that was the fear of, um, of law enforcement, I think that that was it. He realized that I was quite well aware of my rights and that I was not afraid to use them. And he also knew that I had been speaking with a psychiatrist. So he pr probably knew that my psychiatrist knew that he was physically abusive. Um, so anyway, those are some of the games, uh, excuse me, some of the of the game of physical violence that narcissists use. Those are some of the examples of what they use. So, um, like I said, please leave your comments. Um, if you want to just blurt out what you need to blurt out in the comments, go for it. Whatever you need to feel validated. But remember, um, any kind of physical violence is not okay. The level of physical violence that you are facing, you need to get, uh, you need to consider, um, how the best way to involve law enforcement. Um, this type of abuse is illegal and very um, enforceable. Okay, so please take care of yourself. Pay attention to the games, start tracking them. Don't 
confront your abuser and make a strategy to get out. Again, that number for the National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-7233. Call them if you are being physically abused and ask them for advice on how to protect yourself. Much love.